Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new. If you're not familiar with who I am, my name is Diani Neves and I am a Christian blogger, influencer, mentor, and mouthpiece for the Lord, which means that I share the words that God gives me for my brothers and sisters in Christ. This is very impromptu. I actually just got done recording something for the new community that I'm launching. I was reminded that a little while ago, a sister in Christ left a comment under one of my videos touching on confidence, touching on beauty standards. I think there was something she mentioned about how this is an area she's struggling in. And she asked me how I was able to overcome this in my personal life. And I don't think this would be a very long video, but I did want to address that question because I know that there are so many sisters in Christ who are dealing with this and not just sisters, but brothers as well. It might not be as openly spoken about by brothers in Christ, but I know that this is a very real thing that you guys deal with too. And I figured if it's coming to my mind, I should address it and I should allow the Holy Spirit to speak to to those of you who this is on your heart at this season or in this season of your life. I'm going to be very transparent and I believe that many of you who I've already spoken to in mentorship and shared more of my personal testimony with because you know it's come up in conversation and God has led me to, y'all know this or have at least heard snippets of this, right? But in my past, pre-Jesus Christ, right? I was raised in a Christian household, but there came a point in my life around seven, nine years old, um, maybe a little bit older. I definitely started going through a lot. And then as I got into middle school, high school, I strayed away, okay? I walked away from the Lord. I did not have a relationship with him. I would pray every once in a blue moon that he would bless my food, that he would, you know, cover my food. I think that's really the only prayer I ever prayed. Maybe I prayed a prayer or two about grades, um, but that was really it. I did not have an intimate relationship with God. I was filled with anger. I was filled with bitterness. I was filled with hurt. And what I'm going to touch on mostly in this video is I was very, very, very insecure. I knew I was a beautiful girl. I had been raised and had those words spoken over me. So I never really thought I was ugly, but I was definitely very insecure. And I was not confident in who I was as a person. I did not know my value and my worth in the sight of God. And this is mainly due to a lot of the things that I experienced growing up. And, you know, as I was going through what I was going through and I was distancing from God, from the Holy Spirit, I definitely lost sight, which I don't really think I ever knew this because when I was close to him prior to choosing to pursue him in 2019 or early 2020, um, I was like really young again, like anywhere from seven to 10 years old. So I don't think I really fully understood my worth in Jesus at that age. But um, I will say that there was a part of what I had back then that I definitely lost when I got older and started to experience life. As I walked away from that, as I began to forsake what it is that I was taught and what it is that was instilled in me at a young age about how much God loves me, how much Jesus loves me, um, you know, what's right, what's wrong, so on and so forth, I began to look to other things and people to fill the voids that I had. I began to seek validation in things and people and places and mindsets and habits that did not edify or fulfill me. And when I was exploring all of this as I was pursuing Jesus Christ back in 2019, 2020, I remember that God was putting it on my heart so heavy what changed or rather what could have made everything happen differently what could have changed the way things played out in my life and something that he was showing me a few years ago that's always stuck with me is had i had that consistent revelation right had i had an environment that reflected the word of god where there wasn't hypocrisy where there wasn't violence where there wasn't you know um trauma and pain and hurt that pushed and pulled me away from god had I had that consistency of hearing God loves you and then feeling that God loves me reflected after the fact. Had I had that constant Jesus loves you because of this, Jesus loves you because of that, God does not view you in this way. This is what God says about your worth. This is what God says about your value in spite of your mistakes. This is what God says about your value and your worth in spite of things that have happened to you right then i would have grown up i would have gone through maybe still some difficult things for sure because life is life but i would have had a completely different perspective i wouldn't have 
internalize the things that were said to me that were done to me that were you know taking place in front of me and i wouldn't have made those a part of my identity i would have been able to look at those things from thank you holy spirit an objective point of view and i would have been able to take them for what they were as opposed to making them into something that they were never meant to be in my own personal walk with god and an example is, yes, I grew up hearing that I was a beautiful girl, hearing that, you know, I had so much going for me. But then on the other side of the same coin, I had the same people more often than not saying very negative things about me, saying that I had no future ahead of me, saying I was going to make the same mistakes that they did or that they've seen other people make, you know, constantly questioning my decision making and putting me down. I was also having my looks spoken on, okay? So there was a lot of confusion and something that God is putting on my heart right now is that in the midst of that confusion there was a belief thank you Holy Spirit instilled in me okay a seed was planted and took root in my heart in my mind in my spirit where I was convinced that these things that were being spoken of about me that were good must not be true because the source or sources of these good things these compliments these words of affirmation whatever were also the source of the negative things the negative um beliefs the negative mindsets the negative backhanded compliments whatever you want to call it i think subconsciously i turned my heart away from that source from those sources that i found i couldn't rely on for what i needed um just as a person who's growing and trying to figure out life and going through difficult things and confused about what's going on around them confused about where they're going overwhelmed by things that have happened to them you know i decided i needed to look elsewhere to try to get a constant source of that and that turned into looking to multiple different things because nothing was constant i wasn't looking towards jesus i wasn't looking towards god so nothing was filling that void i was finding myself dealing with the same thing in different people over and over and over again and not just different people obviously i was looking for gratification and validation and um, comfort and security in things and habits god really put all of this into perspective when i was thinking about my younger sister one of my little sisters she's about 10 years younger than me i'm 24 so she's turning 14 this year um and there were some things that she was going through she was entering middle school and i was just really praying concerning um you know her walk with god i was praying concerning her confidence in who god has called her to be and something that god whispered to me just kind of made everything click and he was saying you know while children are growing up while children are going through life there needs to be a source of godly validation a seed of godly confidence that is sown into instilled in them so that when they grow up and they begin to go through things that that foundation it, it might be you know attacked by the enemy but it's not going to break and fall apart it will always be something that they can go back to and there's scripture that reflects this granted even with the things that i did go through at a young age i still found my way back to god or rather he found me right that seed was planted and he did what he needed to do to bring me back into relationship with him but i do believe had i not gone through some of the things that i went through things would have played out very differently when god was working on this area in my life not that i'm perfect i still have my moments i still have my days but when this was a real um, I'll say heavy struggle of mine, a really big struggle of mine. He had me go back to the root. He had me go back to my childhood. He had me reflect on the seeds that were planted by the enemy. And he had me basically work with him in the secret place through prayer, through fasting, through decreeing and declaring his word over myself to uproot anything that was planted as a child that wasn't meant to be there. I had to do a lot of reflecting on the things that I did not like about myself. I had to get really honest and transparent with myself about the things that I pretended to like, about who I was pretending to be, who I said I was, and I had to you know, do a lot of journaling. I wrote down the things I did not like about myself. I told God what I did not like about myself, and I did have to pray and ask him to help me see myself through his eyes. There were a lot of days where I woke up and I had sticky notes, I remember at this point in my life, all over my room that, you know, um, they contradicted the things that I believed that were inspired by the enemy. And they spoke directly into points of insecurity that I no longer wanted to be insecurities of mine. 
something else I feel led to touch on really briefly is um, there must have been a part of me, this is something God's putting on my heart right now, that was kind of scared to act um, authentically or be who it is that I knew that he was calling me to be out of fear of you know, intimidating or offending other people or even making other people feel more insecure in and of themselves. And God had to show me that how other people feel about who I am and who he's called me to be is not my responsibility. And um, he doesn't call us to put ourselves under a bucket and essentially snuff ourselves out, but he calls us to be a light. He calls us to shine in dark places so that other people can be brought into relationship with him. And we can't do that if we're constantly covering ourselves up with soot and pretending to be something that we are not. Something else God had to really work on in me is he had to pull me out of comparison. I was constantly comparing myself to other women specifically. And I will say that a huge part of this was um, you know, the people that I would try to yoke myself with in relationships, especially the relationship I was coming out of at the time, that brought out a lot of insecurities in me. I was constantly being, he wouldn't like compare me verbatim, but he would do things that would kind of reflect on me in a way um, and make me question my self-worth. It would make me question my value. And so God had to pull me out of comparison. He had to show me how I am uniquely made. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And there is nothing that anybody else has that, you know, um, that I need. Otherwise, I would have it. He showed me the beauty there is in being set apart. And he also showed me how a lot of the people that I was comparing myself to were also putting on a front. We're also people who are struggling with insecurities of their own. What I might find myself envying in another person might be something that they are, you know, completely insecure about behind the scenes. Something that God had me doing to really break me out of um, just a spirit of comparison and envy is to start praying for the very people that I was comparing myself to. To start praying for the very people that I found myself envying when I was going through low points. And I'll just add that this also really helped in the area of working on forgiveness and forgiving those who have hurt me. I learned that I wasn't growing, I wasn't going anywhere, I wasn't progressing as a person, as an individual, and the way that I wanted to in the way that I knew that I was meant to when my eyes were so fixated on what everybody else was doing, on what I thought people were thinking about me. So it was when I shifted my focus, when I partnered with God to fix my attention onto him, to you know prioritize spending time with him, to prioritize speaking his word over myself and over others, seeing myself and others through his eyes, that I began to grow, that my heart began to soften, not only towards others, but predominantly towards myself. So if this is an area, insecurity, confidence that you find that you are really struggling with right now, the first place that you need to start, you know, try not to overcomplicate things. The first place that you need to start is in your relationship with God, okay? First, you need to start by confessing what it is that you're thinking and feeling to him because he already knows. Get real, get honest, journal it if you need to, record it in your phone. Start vlogging or documenting your journey if God is leading you to. This is something that he put on my heart to do. Honestly, it wasn't very intentional. Now I can go back and look at all the content he's had me put out and I can see how much I've grown as an individual. I can also go back and read all my journal entries and see how much I've grown through those as well. Focus on what God is calling you to focus on. Seek first the kingdom and all these things will be added. And that goes for anything and everything that God could possibly add into our lives. It's not just physical things that that scripture is referring to. It's also spiritual, mental, and emotional as well. But I pray that this word blessed you. I completely forgot to mention this when I was recording this video. So that's why I look completely different. This is like a couple days, if not a day later. But I wanted to announce to you guys that I've partnered with somebody to create a new community for both brothers and sisters in Christ. A lot of you are aware that I already had a community started for Sisters in Christ specifically via Facebook. But at the time that I was starting that, I was doing it all on my own. I got really overwhelmed and 
um, essentially stuck, did not know how to really build it out, although I had the vision. And it's come to my attention that God has intended for that to be a little bit later down the road. And the person that I'm working with, thank God for him and him just reaching out and being obedient to what he was feeling led to do at the time. We've been able to partner and put something together for fellowship, for growth, for learning, Bible studies, devotionals, Q and A's, challenges, so on and so forth. So if you are not a part of my email list and you did not already get an email invitation, and this sounds like something you would like to be a part of, I want to invite you to join. You can find the information, the link for it rather, down below in the description box. And then last but not least, thank you to everyone who has been supporting the journals that I put out late last year. I believe it was like September? No, it was November. I think it was in November and then I announced them like sometime early this year. If you've not already grabbed a butterfly diary prompts or a prayer journal, then you can do so in the description box as well. They are both on Amazon. I am working on some more devotionals, not just for my sisters in Christ, but my brothers in Christ as well. I know the ones that I already released. Um, one of them, the butterfly diary prompts is catered to women and then the prayer journal, it's just designed very feminine but god has been putting my brothers in christ on my heart to just keep in mind when i come out with future devotionals and journals and things of the sort remember that i love you god loves you so much more and i look forward to seeing you in my next video bye